Hey guys, it's Marshall from Going Gear. We're here in Las Vegas, SHOT Show 2012. We're here again this year, David Shao from Four Sevens. How are you doing today, David? Doing great. I was uh, wondering if you could show us some new products. Sure, sure. Right, let's take a look. So the first thing you notice is uh, our branding's changed. It's been updated. Um, first thing you might notice is our name. We, we're spelling out four now instead of having the number. That'll help with some uh, people getting confused. But um, And then we have a new logo here. And you'll see it's a, it's a lightning bulb in here and also a four and a seven. Pretty cool, huh? It's we a good looking logo. I like it a lot. Yeah, it sure is. Um, we brought in an outside agency and looked at every aspect of the company and created something that better represents our technology and our, our company vision and focus. So this will be our new logo from this point on. Okay. So um, most of our products on display here have uh, the new logo, new styling. We're going for a more sterile look, simpler, more elegant with, a, with our logo stamp there. We're also going to, <clears throat> we're going towards a, a new naming conventions and new SKUs. Um, that will actually take place in April. The catalog is also a great addition to this. Very simple, elegant, displays our logo um, embossed right here. And uh, what's neat about the catalog is, first of all, the unique shape. Also, each product has its own page, uh, own page right? <clears throat> With a picture on one side and the full specs on the left. And, um, and the products are actual size so that you know you can actually put your hand next to it and realize hey that's that's actual size that's a really cool feature do you call that out in the catalog saying that they are the actual size we do actually it's in the very back it's all products yeah. actual size so you want to really know cool. when the next s18 looks like next to your hand that's what it looks like so, nice and um, for the nice pull out full specs so that's a new catalog with a new logo so, as I mentioned before, most of the products are existing. Um, so, most so the the, the the primary effort was the rebranding effort. <clears throat> but we do have some new uh, releases at the shot. And let's start with small to big. How about sure. that? So the first thing we have is the P0, and this is the world's smallest production current regulated AAA light. It's uh, not much bigger than a AAA battery. I'll go ahead and take the battery let's, out. And show uh, you. Let's throw a Prion 1 next to it. Because oh, yeah, the Prion sure. 1 was already tiny. Yeah. And uh, look at that. I mean, the Prion 1 was nothing already. And <laughs> the, the yeah. Prion 0 is, or, or is it Prion 0 or P0? P0. P0. Prion's P0. Okay. Uh -huh. P0 is, that thing is tiny. Yep, yep, yep. And um, actually, what I want to do is get a battery out and show you. Just, just how small this thing is. It's just not much bigger than the battery. One unique feature is the, is the little magnet at the rear where uh, you can attach it to certain, you know, <laughs> devices to be, I mean, magnetic points to, to be uh, hands-free. Sure. <clears throat> so with the, bat with the magnet in the back, see that? This is, this is about where the battery resides. And you kind of wonder, where does the LED, the circuit, everything fits? Well, um, I guess the CPFers will figure that out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all crammed in there somewhere. So um, this light is a flood type light. There's no reflector in it. So uh, the, the, the light that comes out of it is uh, an even, nice and smooth beam for a close-up look. Yeah, definitely. Good for reading at night or any kind of up-close tasks. You don't have that hot spot to give you the tunnel vision kind yeah, of effect. Yeah, or blind you. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so it's got a very, very nice... So, but what you see back here is actually just a, a cover, but it's a, it's a plastic piece impregnated with a, a glow-in-the-dark glow phosphorus. Oh, nice. So, so actually... So you turn it on a little bit, and hold it up so you can see the, the glow. Kind of. That's pretty neat. <laughs> A little gimmick. How long will that glow for? Um, not that long. Yeah. It's just kind of a fun thing. Yeah. So I mentioned this is a current re regulated light. It's current regulated with two modes. Comes on on low with 0.2 lumens. You probably can't, you can barely see that. I think you should pick it up. And it runs uh, five plus hours. Uh, oh, wow. No, five plus days. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> on a single AAA battery. And uh, that's unprecedented for a <laughs> just a single AAA sure. light. And then on high, 25 lumens out the front. So just the two modes on that one. Mm -hmm. We spec'd it low. Um, 
I mean, some of these some of these are coming off at, at 30 lumens. Sure. So um, this will run for 90 minutes. Okay. Which is also very impressive for a AAA light. And, and the retail price on that is pretty low, right? Yeah, $24.99. That's not bad. It's yep, a great yep. little pocket light. Construction is stainless steel, um, mirror polish at the ends, and then bead glass in the middle. So that's that's it. I think it'll be a it'll be a hit. Here's a little packaging. Includes a battery as always. Uh, instructions and specs right there. Do you have any plans to make it in any other materials at all? Well, um, people have asked about aluminum, but the problem with aluminum is uh, you can only get so thin and you kind of risk uh, the strength. Sure, and it starts bending on you. In stainless steel, uh, we're able to cut things a little thinner, you know, without compromising the, the rigidity and other issues like that. Since we're both going to get this inevitable question, what about titanium? Um, we'll, we'll look look further down the road. Maybe you know? someday. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but honestly, with, with what we do with our titanium lights, polishing like that, it, it will look very similar to this. Sure. Yeah. And the, the, the neat thing about stainless or titanium is that as, as you carry it and, and the wear is, it's not like aluminum where the anodizing would chip off. Right. It, fair, it stays pretty nice. Sure, it gives us a nice character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the Prion P0. See the engraving right there. So this, um, we've already opened up for pre-order and they should ship by the end of the month. Nice. Another item we've got uh, at the, here at the SHOT Show is the <clears throat> our 4.7's Tactical Titanium Pen. This pen is uh, pretty amazing because it's, it's, it's cut very, very slow, so it comes straight off the machine like this. No finish work or anything like that? No post-processing. Wow. Ex except the clip. There's a little uh, <clears throat> Yeah. But um, the supplier told me it takes about close to two hours to do this thing. For each pen? For each pen. Wow. And um, That's how C do we come CNC up with... CNC work, right? Two CNC. hours of CNC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, not some elf in the back doing it. No, so there's, some, there's some massive flashlights that take two hours. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, the thing is this, is like uh, a lot of manufacturers, they'll cut things really quick um, for the same saving time, right. cost, which equals the cost, and then uh, finish it somehow to cover the blemishes. Right. This guy comes off straight off the machine, just like this. And um, if you actually look under the microscope, you see microscopic grooves each, each of the cuts. Cool. You can probably count each one. You can, so you can somewhat feel a little bit of grip. The cuts, yeah. But it's so slight, you, you can barely feel it if you're not. It feels smooth to my finger. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's nice. And um, you can even, under certain lighting, you can see the kind of <coughs> rainbow effect of the different angles of sure. the titanium. Yeah. So why do we do a pen? Well, I've always uh, been impressed with the uh, Fisher Space Pen in that it can write on any surface, upside down. Say in your survival situation, you could leave a, a note for your friend on a leaf. Yep. So we took this this pen ref refill and built a light around it that just is just barely bigger than it. You see that? It's just a pen. Yeah. It's just yeah. It, it, it's just we just wrap titanium around it. Sure. Yeah. So. Um, that's why we chose this uh, particular refill. And um, why is it a tactical pin? Well, it comes with a, uh, a strike point at the end for glass breaking. Okay. Not for glass breaking, not strike point. But optionally, we'll be offering um, two optional uh, <clears throat> endpoints that you can swap out. It just unscrews, and you can put this uh, a lanyard loop. Right there, see that? And um, that way you can attach it securely to you. Okay. <clears throat> Why do we put it at the tail instead of the head? Well, say in a survival situation and the, the, the cap and the pin separates, would you rather have, you know, this around your neck or the pin around your neck? Right? That's a good point. So this makes it more secure. Also, when you unscrew this, uh, you can actually unscrew it from your lanyard and, and write with it and screw it back on okay. as well. <clears throat> the other point, optional point, that we'll, we'll offer is the uh, kind of a crenellated strike point for self-defense, um, aka uh, DNA collector. Uh, and you see it kind of conceals nicely in your hand. So That's just, nice. Yeah. Any plans on offering any other tips in the future? Yes, there is, but I won't talk about that. Okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> there will. We'll make another video. Yeah. And we, we 
you know, it's funny you ask that because I asked the supplier to, to standardize this uh, endpoint so we can attach all kinds of things to it. Cool. Um, one last thing about the design. <clears throat> Some will ask, hey, why, why, uh, why didn't you have the cap be able to put, you know, cap on the rear? Well, there's a specific reason for that. You know how you have a nice pin that always goes missing and mo most of the time it's uh, people who borrow it and never return. Yeah. Well, if someone borrow, asks for a pin, you lend this one out, what you do is you keep the cap in your hand and give them the pin. And the cap serves as a reminder to you and the pin without a cap is a reminder to them. They, they won't put it in their pocket without a cap. Right. You know? And uh, if someone was trying to steal your pen, it's, 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 it's no good without the cat. Right, so right. That's, this is by design. So it's sleek, it's simple. We're going for this kind of style because, uh, like Da Vinci said, uh, simplicity is the, the highest form of sophistication. Sure. <laughs> Wait, is that what I probably misquoted? Something like that. Something like that, yeah. We get the idea. <laughs> and our logo is right there at the rear tip. I like the new logo, it looks really good. Got a very nice design to the secure clipping. Sure. So that's the second item. Should we go on to the next? Okay, the third item we have is the finally the long awaited uh, XM18 that was announced. So, last but not least, what we've got is a updated um, tactical ball that uh, puts out roughly four times more than last year. So what kind of lumens are we looking at with this thing? Uh, we're looking at 8,000 plus. Oh wow. We've got eight XML in here, and we're pushing uh, about four amps to eat, uh, oh, each LED each. What kind of battery is in there? Um, but that's uh, proprietary. We're not going to you know, okay. talk about that. I'm not even going to open it this time. But uh, um, but this thing is going into production. We'll probably be putting these together stateside. Okay. So, so that this, we can... this is still a prototype that we're looking at. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. But though uh, we may never make uh, offer it to uh, the, the public because first of all, there's not that much application. You know. Right. Second of all, uh, there's probably some product liability here. Sure. So so I'll just fire it up. Um, actually. The jump between two and eight is not that great. I mean, ah, your, your eyes can't really detect that much. You probably just saw a blur of white. <laughs> but um, it is it is eight. We're, we're pushing four amps to each XML LED. It's another one of the things that I've blinded myself with many, many times. Yep. <laughs> not fun. Ah, oh, that thing is obnoxious. Jeez. So we're planning on some other neat things where people can reconfigure it. Sure. Um, actually, these things will be able to talk to each other. Really? So you can synchronize, they can be synchronized to the flash at the same time or in sequence. Oh wow. So it's not just a flashbang type application, but also um, the Air Force can use it for mark, marking fields, okay. uh, landing sites and stuff like that. So okay. um, we're working on it. That's really cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, so that, what, what kind of uh, what kind of lead time are we looking out on these things this year? Maybe probably mid year. We'll okay. have it. We'll have something. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all the other stuff we looked at is, uh, if not available now, it's going to be available very soon. Yes. This okay. Year. All right. Good to hear. Awesome. So I also mentioned uh, at the press conference that we're working on two other projects that are, you know, have been long running. One is the headlamp. Um, we're, we're going to put out a headlamp that the market has never seen before. We're, we're going to target 2,000 plus lumens. Uh, we're waiting for patents to clear. There's, 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 uh, there's stuff in there that will blow people's minds. And we should have that by the end of this year. Um, and secondly, the, the, uh, the, the pistol light that we've been working on for the past two years should be rolling out. Excellent. So, um, Look for that near the end of this year, possibly mid this year, but uh, it's it's work in progress. All right, David, thanks for your time. Thank you, Marshall.